In this video, I'm just going to talk through the figures in the textbook that have to do with the warning about model-driven results. So to give credit where credit's due, these figures were directly inspired by this XKCD comic that is referenced in the textbook. And the setup for both of them is the same. We have lots of different graphs here, but what you'll notice is that the scatter plot part, the data points, these black dots, that part is identical in every single graph. So they're all showing the same data set, but then different fitted regression lines. So here's a linear fit and a quadratic fit, a uh, logarithmic fit, he calls it exponential. Uh, here's a type of non-parametric regression. Here's just an intercept only model. And the point, well, partly the point is to be funny, but the point that we'll take away from it is that you can have the exact same data set but get very, very different results depending on the regression model that you specify. So if you specify a linear model, it looks like it's just going up and up and up by the same amount. A one unit increase in X is always associated with the same change in Y. Whereas for a quadratic model, because it's quadratic, it has this parabolic shape and so it sort of starts going down and then goes up. It doesn't just have a constant slope the whole time. Um, whereas if you fit this uh, logarithmic model here, um, and this is a linear log model, you end up getting sort of the opposite shape of the quadratic fit, actually. Instead of sort of increasing more and more, it ends up uh, as XKCD author says tapering off. So it's sort of steeper initially and then it gets flatter and flatter. Um, and then that's also the opposite of this one down here um, and so on. And so that's the same point um, in here. So again, there's a linear on here, the linear log, like I said, that's the one that was labeled logarithmic in the comic. Um, this log linear is what um, was labeled exponential. There's also a log log just for uh, completeness. But you can see again, you know, same data set in all four cases, but very qualitatively different results. So all of them sort of show a general increasing pattern, but in the linear case, if we specify a linear model, then regardless of the data, it always has the same slope everywhere. So regardless of the initial value of x, a one unit increase in x is always associated with the same change in y. Uh, whereas that's not true for the log linear or linear log models. <laughs> then different figure later, uh, here, this is a different data set than before, but again, it's the same data set in each of the four panels. Here, looking more at uh, different polynomial models, so linear, quadratic, cubic. Um, again, you know, with the linear, it's just always positive, uh, or with another data set, it could be always negative, uh, but it makes it seem like it's sort of the same positive or negative change in Y associated with an increase in X, regardless of where we are. Whereas here for the quadratic, the, it can be increasing in one part and decreasing in another part. Um, so in particular, if we look at these higher values of X, when we look at the linear fit, it still suggests that an increase in X is associated with an increase in Y, so a positive relationship. Whereas with the quadratic model, we end up with a negative relationship for these larger values of x. So it's not just you know, a quantitative difference, but 
the, the shape itself, even whether it's a positive or a negative relationship, that changes. Um, and then the cubic, <laughs> again, is even more flexible than the quadratic and now starts to disagree for the larger values of x, but sort of the opposite reason again. Now it's increasing again, so it shows a positive relationship here, whereas quadratic was decreasing, but the cubic de uh, excuse me, disagrees with the linear model for these middle values of x, where it shows a negative relationship, whereas the linear model showed a positive relationship. And again, with this sort of trigonometric model, uh, you can get even different results in terms of where it's positive or uh, negative, uh, more similar to the quadratic, except that whereas the quadratic gets more and more negative once you pass this turning point here, this maximum, the trigonometric starts to get negative, but then it flattens out here. So when we look at those largest values of x, even the quadratic and the trigonometric disagree. Um, so again, this is all using the same exact data set. So all of these differences are being driven by the model that's chosen. So it's not being driven by the data. It's you know, partly using the data to fit the model, but a lot of these differences across these four fitted functions here is being driven by the model choice itself, uh, which is one reason people sometimes use non-parametric regression and a reason that that is discussed um, in this chapter of the textbook.